The battle for middleweight supremacy is taking place in New York. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Gennady Golovkin versus Danny Jacobs. A real big fight for the middleweight division. You have the number one and number two middleweights, both champions, one a super champion, one a regular champion, and they're squaring off against each other. March 18th, Madison Square Garden, and I'm looking forward to it. Both guys are knockout artists. I think Danny Jacobs has about 14 or 15 knockouts in a row. Golovkin has 24. Real deal power. Now, Danny Jacobs, he was at the Brooklyn Nets training facility, their practice facility, and he did some interviews. He had some interesting things to say. I want to kind of give his quotes and then give my thoughts on it. And he was basically commenting on the level of opposition that Triple G as a professional has faced. And he's saying the people that Triple G beat, they were B class. They weren't like A class people. And when asked about who was his best win, who was Golovkin's best win, he says his top opponent, which was what? Kel Brook? He says... You can't really consider him. I mean, he's an A class, but Kell Brook was in that fight considered a B class because of the weight difference. He hasn't really fought an A class type of guy. Basically meaning, I know you guys in all of your heart of all hearts, you want to believe that Kell Brook was an actual middleweight, but he wasn't. And I don't care what the, what the scale says because it's always easier to bulk up in a short period of time then it would be to force your body to deplete itself and, and break down muscle to go down. For example, Kell Brook can eat all he wants and gain weight in, you know, in a couple months and just like throw caution to the wind with his diet and bulk up. But it would be much harder and much more damaging to the body for Golovkin to try to cut weight and keep cutting weight with his frame, with his size and try to come down to 147. You know what I mean? It's kind of a one-way street. So, Kell Brook wasn't a middleweight. He thought he was, and I mean, that was quickly disproved by Golovkin. The, Floyd Mayweather said it best. Moving up in weight is a process. Weight classes exist for a reason. You know what I mean? And just to think you're going to... Middleweights can't take Golovkin's power, and you think you're just going to go from welterweight and fighting pretty shitty opposition in your last three fights since Sean Porter... Jojo Dan, the BZA, and Gavin, and then beat the, the big bad wolf in another division, two divisions higher, doesn't make sense. So that's basically what Danny Jacobs is saying. Kell Brook, he's an A-side type of fighter, A-level fighter in terms of a pure skill set, but not in this equation because he wasn't equal size. He was a guy moving up in dramatic fashion. He didn't, he didn't acclimate. He didn't have a tune-up in the division. He just immediately plunged two divisions higher and you've seen the outcome we've never seen Kell Brook take that type of injury in a fight his eye got his socket got shattered and that's because he just he wasn't naturally of that note I mean and Brook he held his own in spots but Triple G said he didn't even feel his power so obviously he wasn't dealing with the middleweight if, if the man himself is saying and he got hit with some pretty solid shots so and that's the thing that that makes it so hard to talk boxing with uneducated boxing fans and like people who are more groupies for a certain fighter is because the stuff that they say it just it sounds ridiculous like I don't think me personally Kel, like I think Triple G has a good chin but I think Kell Brook's power Triple G felt it I don't think it was just like the same as Willie Monroe and again he started seeming like he was getting mad and frustrated with Kell Brook landing those shots so I think he was just kind of trying to save face but it doesn't matter even even if you play the other side of the fence and and assume that Kell Brook had no power to hurt him then that makes it even worse for Golovkin. And the only people who are really dying to do this are diehard Golovkin fans. So you're actually making it worse for your fighter because you're saying he's fighting a level of opposition, a guy who's moving up. And you just said he was a real middleweight. Kell Brook is bigger and weighing more at his 30-day weigh-in and stuff, but he doesn't have the power to hurt Golovkin. So how is that a fair fight or how is that impressive? So you actually, <laughs> what fans do, like the groupies, is... They make it worse for their fighter because in an attempt to give their fighter credit, they're actually discrediting their fighter by saying 
that he's picking a level of opposition that clearly can't hurt him because they're not big enough. You know what I'm saying? Same thing with Danny Jacobs. I've seen it's like this uh, coalition of people like, oh, Dimitri P. Rock point two point oh and stuff. You should be trying to build up Danny Jacobs so the win looks more impressive if, if Golovkin goes in there and blows him out. But when while you're trying to shit on Danny Jacobs, you actually make it worse because then why would it be impressive if if Triple G gets his 25th knockout and knocks out Jacob? So it, it actually pays in boxing to be more realistic. You know what I mean? And the, for, the, the fact of the matter is Jacobs is an underdog, but this is a good win for the winner. Whoever wins it. If Triple G wins it, very good win because since his stoppage loss to Dimitri Parag, he's battled cancer, survived that. That's, I mean, they, he, it was wrapped around his spine or something. So they said he might not be able to walk. Battling that takes true grip. And then he bounced back career-wise, stopped Sergio Mora twice, a guy who's crafty and hard to stop. Stopped Peter Quillen, undefeated, never been stopped before. So instead of bashing Triple G's current opponent when there's no reason to, it actually makes more sense to to give him credit. This is the number two middleweight behind Triple G. And again, the people who are bashing Jacobs, like, oh, haha, easy fight and stuff like Kell Brook and, and stuff like he can't hurt Golovkin. You actually make it look worse for your fighter. Why is he fighting Kell Brook if Brook could never hurt him, even if he landed flush shots? You know what I'm saying? But anyway, back to what Danny Jacobs was saying. I had to get that little rant out of there. Jacobs went on to say a lot of people are saying that this is his first real test a true middleweight with my size my speed and everything i bring to the table so i'm looking forward to taking advantage of that because he's going to be in there with is probably going to be a lot different from what he's anticipating or what he's used to and that's coming from jacobs i gotta agree with jacobs in terms of this now keep in mind this doesn't mean just because jacobs is saying this doesn't mean he's going to win the fight this is not a fight prediction video but you have to question Triple G's level of, of opposition. I mean, he, he just has not had the name. For one reason or another, the end result is not changed. It does not change the, the mere fact. that I had an old manager, and he said, what's the difference between a reason and an excuse? And I was like, um, an excuse? I mean, a reason is... And he was like, exactly. There is no difference. So I get it to a degree certain people have avoided Golovkin like I don't think Martinez Sergio was in in a rush to fight him Cotto Canelo vacated I get that but you still the end result is still the same you fought a certain level of opposition and and what Jacobs is saying is true because the reason I know it is true is because if you look at any other 34 year old known elite person from De La Hoya to Julio Cesar Chavez Sr. to Pacquiao Mayweather at age 34 and you say what's their best most meaningful win I guarantee you certain names are going to come up you know what I mean like you look at Mayweather's resume it'll be hard to determine who was the best was it an undefeated Ricky Hatton was it undefeated Canelo was it undefeated Diego Corrales same thing with Pacquiao what's Pacquiao's best win how he tore up De La Hoya easy work how he knocked out Ricky Hatton in two rounds, once beaten. Was it Marco Antonio Barrera? Was it one of the Eric Morales fight? You know what I'm saying? There's so many to choose from. Was it Bradley who was undefeated? And he arguably beat, in my opinion, Pacquiao beat Bradley three times. And Bradley was undefeated at a point. So, you know what I mean? There's a lot of people to choose from. When you talk about Golovkin, you'll get a mixture of different opinions from it. Some people say Curtis Stevens. I mean, okay, Curtis Stevens, chin checker, I think he fought at like 168. He had been stopped before, right? He's much shorter. I'll show you guys a picture in this video. Much shorter than Golovkin. So even though he has power, it was always an uphill battle for Golovkin. Golovkin is a good fighter. Martin Murray, a guy who's never become champion in all of his title shots, for what, whether it's controversial or not, the fact remains he was never a champion. He fought Felix Sturm, draw. He fought Sergio Martinez. They didn't give it to him. Arthur Abram after, he lost that fight. So Golovkin, he lost that fight. So, you know what I mean? It's that's that's those are facts. These are cold hard facts. You can go to Martin Murray's box rec or whatever, and you'll see that. So he never got to live like a champion. Is it Daniel Gill? You know what I mean? Who lost to Darren Barker? Who doesn't really have much power? Is it Matthew Macklin? You know what I'm saying? Is it David Lemieux? A guy who 
became a he has a puncher. You know, I mean, he's a puncher, but he had been stopped by Marco Antonio Rubio, guy Golovkin bombed out of there, and then he immediately lost his next fight against Joshim Alcine, right? Joshim Alcine, like Matthew Macklin knocked him out one round at home in Canada, I believe. So, you know what I mean? I never really rated Hoshim Alcine, and he holds a win over David Lemieux. You can say, oh, David Lemieux's team at the time. It doesn't matter. Reason and excuse. What's the difference? David Lemieux, his wins that, that got him the title shot or whatever, he fought guys that middleweights had already beaten, right? Hassan Indami, he, he did good in that fight, knocked him down four times. Peter Quillen already beat him and knocked him down six times, right? He beat Gabe Rosado. Rosado had already lost to Alfredo El Perro and Gulo and got stopped by him. Golovkin stopped Rosado. He had lost to Jay Leon Love and it was switched to a no contest. He lost to Peter Quillen. Way be all these fights happened before David Lemieux. So David Lemieux fought for a vacant belt because Jermaine Taylor is insane. Right? And his first fight, he showed cojones, but he clearly wasn't ready for that type of fight in Golovkin schooled him and you know I mean dominated him with the jab so I mean you have to agree with Jacobs in terms of it doesn't mean he's going to win the fight but facts are facts Golovkin's level of opposition for some reason at age 34 has been subpar to mediocre there there are no great guy that's why it doesn't make sense to take away from Jacobs's bounce back since his sole loss to Dimitri Perot because he's done a lot and this is a like there's no disputing this is a quality win if Golovkin goes in there and makes it look 25 consecutive knockouts easy work Golovkin deserves a lot of prop that's why I'm looking forward to this fight you got a guy 14 15 knockouts in a row he's slightly taller than you he has some good momentum stopped the undefeated fighter recently in Peter Quillen who's a big puncher and a big guy Another reason I give Jacobs credit for that, that was like a everything on the line type of fight, battle for Brooklyn. That's Peter Quillen's second home. Quillen was undefeated. He's definitely a big puncher, and he knocked him out in one round. And Quillen, if you know, at that time, like this is a guy who was having trouble making weight, and then he might even, to this point, might even move up to the next division. So he's a, he's a big dude. So, of course, if Golovkin goes in there and just dominates Danny Jacobs, he deserves a lot of credit. If Jacobs, obviously, as the underdog, upsets Golovkin, stops him or outboxes him or whatever, then he deserves a lot of credit. That's why we want to see this fight. So it just pays to have the fans be more realistic. And Golovkin is a good fighter. This is not like a slander video or a slander campaign, but we got to see him fight somebody. And this is, is a step in the right direction, right? Jacobs win is is very big and I believe will be the best win if he, if he does what he's been doing like the Dominic Wade's and stuff and he makes Jacobs look like that best win on his resume because this is a guy with some solid momentum solid height amateur background boxing skill he has a lot of power for the division things of that sort so again if it's that type of fight prop Kell Brook I would give him a lot of props if Kell Brook even was at 54 and moved up you know what i'm saying but jumping two weight divisions that's not really that that's to be expected you know what i mean i'm more impressed by guys coming out of nowhere like like people hate on danny garcia and and talk mad shit about danny garcia but stylistically and and just in some of his fights he was favored to lose he was favored to lose to eric morales the first time morales was a champion despite his age and he beat him and knocked him down in that and then came back and knocked him out because of rematch clause amir khan they were talking about amir khan versus mayweather and then he knocks out amir khan right amir khan i don't think had lost since uh Bradis prescott right so he was the underdog zab judah danny garcia the people said that was a southpaw with athleticism speed and power that was all wrong for garcia's slow style his clubbing style and he beat those. So I'm more impressed with that. Like the Joe Smith Juniors of the world. He beat Bernard Hopkins. Even though he was older. It's Hopkins. And Hopkins has schooled many a young talent. Powerful punchers. Youthful guys. And he was the first to stop Hopkins. So it wasn't a divorce cloud. Kelly Pavlik type of night for Hopkins. You give. 
I give credit. Same thing with Andres Fanfara. Fanfara climbed back up the ladder, beat Chavez Jr., knocked down Adonis Stevenson. So since the Stevenson loss, he was on the incline. He had uh, looked good versus Cleverly, and that was like a fight of the year type, but he was clearly winning. And then out of nowhere, Joe Smith Jr. knocks him out. So um, Golovkin's opponents, to me, I just haven't seen that. I haven't seen him in and do something that he wasn't expected to do, including Kell Brook. Kell Brook had the uphill battle. And you know what I'm saying? Dominique Wade, no one had even heard of him. No, I don't think anyone's heard of him since. Like, where's he been? You know what I'm saying? David Lemieux, no title defenses, and you go at the, at the number one guy. So it's just like, resume-wise, Golovkin's resume needs help. And I've been saying this. Troy King is, has said this. People get mad because they want to get defensive because of the fighter. There's no one else at age 34 where I think you could say that. Look at Sergey Kovalev. I don't even know if he's 34 yet, but I mean, he has names on his resume. He's went into people's backyard cleverly, Pascal twice, knocked Andre Ward down. I mean, his stripes speak for himself. Andre Ward, 33, same thing. We know these people's pedigree, but to me, Jacobs is the first name where you could say, man, this guy may have a chance. He's a little bit taller. He's a big puncher and he has a ton of momentum. I didn't see that with David Lemieux or any of these guys. David Lemieux was shorter. David Lemieux been stopped before, just like Jacobs. But Jacobs only got stopped by a high ranking. You know what I mean? Marco Antonio Rubio lost to Chavez Jr., I think. Lost to Golovkin. Had been stopped before and still beat David Lemieux. Jacobs lost to Dimitri Perot, who was a damn good fighter. And if it weren't for injury, he would still probably be relevant in the division. They were talking about making Dimitri versus Triple G right after the Prosca fight, but then he got injured or sick or whatever happened to him and he had to prematurely retire. But he was a quality fighter and Jacobs hasn't lost since then. And he battled cancer. So, I mean, whoever wins this fight, it's a big win for them. Let me know what you guys think of Danny Jacobs' comments. He basically said Golovkin's opponents have all been B-class with the exception of Kell Brook, who's an A-class fighter, but based on the weight disparity and made him B-class. Drop that in the comment section. Let me know your fight predictions. As always, hate, comment, and subscribe. Till next video is Ego signing off.